Thank you for joining me on Synthesis Workshop. On today's Total Synthesis episode, we'll go through the recent total synthesis of daphnesamines A and B by the group of Professor Chao Li at the National Institute of Biological Sciences and Tsinghua University in Beijing. Let's check out their route. Daphnesamines A and B are a particular subtype of daphnephylum alkaloids which possess an aza-adamantane motif. Aside from their structural complexity, they do possess some desirable biological activity in that daphnesamine B is cytotoxic against rodent lymphoma cells. Thinking about how to approach these targets retrosynthetically, the authors recognize that the targets contain a carbonyl amine, which can be thought of as a tautomer of a ketoamine. They propose that it might be possible to simplify retrosynthetically by taking advantage of this tautomerization, which conversely might be leveraged in the synthetic direction by using an acid to lock the target as the carbonyl amine. This approach has been previously used by Heathcock and Lay in their work on the lycopodium alkaloids. The authors continued their retrosynthetic analysis by proposing a radical cyclization, which they thought might be possible using appropriate hydrogen atom transfer conditions. They further simplified by proposing an olefination to construct the tri-substituted olefin, as well as an oxidation to set up the cyclohexenone motif that would be necessary for the subsequent radical conjugate addition step. Going back further, the authors envisioned using a diastere selective hydroboration and suzuki mural coupling to append the cyclohexene fragment to a 1,1 disubstituted alkene. This bicyclic intermediate was then proposed to arise from a palladium-catalyzed oxidative cyclization, which could be carried out on a monocyclic precursor such as this. Finally, the authors proposed using allylic amination chemistry developed by Sharpless to arrive at this type of intermediate starting from commercial carbon. So, in the synthetic direction, the authors started by hydrogenating both alkenes present in s carvone using the conditions shown, followed by the formation of the tips enol triflate. Then they got right to work installing the nitrogen present in the final target, which they did successfully using the allylic amination of Sharpless, employing selenium and chloramine T to obtain these two products, A and B, in a 2 to 1 ratio favoring A. This product mixture is presumably formed by the reaction of the enol silane starting material with a selenodiamide generated under the reaction conditions, which through an ene reaction provides this mixture of intermediates. A subsequent 2-3 sigmatropic rearrangement on each of these intermediates can lead to carbon-nitrogen bond formation, which, after a hydrolysis step, leads to the product shown. It's worth pointing out here that there has been some recent work published on a catalytic version of this type of allylic amination by the group of Forrest Michael in the last reference at the bottom. So, carrying on product A, they installed an allyl group on the nitrogen using sodium hydride and allyl bromide. That allylated intermediate was then used as a substrate in a palladium-catalyzed oxidative cyclization, which provided this bicyclic product. We can understand this reaction pathway as being one that likely involves these types of intermediates, where a migratory insertion sets up the key carbon-carbon bond of the product, and a beta-hydride elimination regenerates the olefin. Then, the authors protected the ketone as a bulky ketal before proceeding. Here, using the 9-BBN dimer, they carried out a diastere-selective hydroboration to set the stereochemistry at C6. Importantly, they found that it was necessary to have this bulky ketal present in order to get this step to happen diastere selectively. A subsequent boron alkyl Suzuki mural cross coupling resulted in the successful attachment of the cyclohexene fragment. Then, treatment with TFA followed by sodium hydroxide resulted in removal of the ketal, at which point the authors observed significant epimerization at C11, which they propose is occurring through an SN1 type pathway en route to an intermediate trifluoracetate ester, which they observe. Hydrolysis of that TFA ester led to the regeneration of the allylic alcohol motif upon treatment with sodium hydroxide. While they initially got this sequence to work starting from an enantiopure iodocyclohexene allylic alcohol, they showed that starting from a racemic allylic alcohol provided similar results. The authors proceeded by treating their ketone-containing intermediate with a Grignard reagent in the presence of lanthanum chloride, which delivered a diastereomeric mixture of products. However, it's worth pausing here for a moment to note that in principle, both of the stereocenters at C8 and C11 are inconsequential. Now the authors went in for a protecting group swap, first removing the tosyl group with sodium naphthalenide and then reprotecting with bach 2 Afterwards, they treated with DMP in order to convert the allylic alcohol into an enone, thereby erasing the stereochemistry at C11, and then Burgess reagent in order to obtain this dehydrated intermediate, where the stereochemistry at C8 has also been erased. At this point, the authors utilized an oxoammonium reagent, bobbit salt, in order to convert the benzyl ether into a carboxylic acid. Removal of the benzyl protecting group in the presence of the other alkenes in the substrate is not exactly trivial. Now, trimethylsilyl diazomethane could be used to convert the carboxylic acid into a methyl ester, and TFA allowed removal of the Bach group. 
And here, having arrived at a point where several synthetic options might be investigated, the authors looked at lots of different approaches and finally identified conditions that allowed this ring closure to take place by turning to hydrogen atom transfer chemistry developed by Barron, Shenvey, and others. Applying the generally accepted mechanistic framework for this type of transformation, we expect that this is occurring by delivery of a hydrogen radical to the tri-substituted alkene, followed by a radical conjugate addition and one electron reduction to form an enolate that the authors proposed as quenched diester selectively via a 1,5 proton transfer from the ammonium. Then to finish off the synthesis, the authors used the ketoamine as a precursor for a carbonylamine by treating with TFA and methanol in water, arriving at daphnesamines A and B as their trifluoroacetate salts. They also found that it was possible to selectively obtain the former target, isolating it in 53% yield, by using acetin nitrile instead of methanol, and from there it was possible to use just TMS diazomethane to convert the carboxylic acid into a methyl ester to obtain daphnesamine B. And with that, the Lee group completed the synthesis of daphnesamines A and B. This was a total synthesis that tested the limits of modern reductive coupling techniques under the hydrogen atom transfer manifold and had a rapid buildup of complexity by connecting the palladium-catalyzed oxidative cyclization with the diester-selective hydroboration suzuki Mirara chemistry. Thank you for joining us for another Total Synthesis episode. If you enjoyed it, please support us by subscribing and telling your peers about this podcast, and feel free to send us any questions and comments you have. Check out our website, synthesis-workshop.com, and follow us on Twitter to stay up to date. See you all next time.